Masters. Welcome to Eco Ask Why. Today we have a hero episode and I'm very excited to have with me Chris Roche, who is the CEO at Catalyst Consulting. So welcome, Chris. How are you doing today? I'm uh, doing very well, thank you. Looking forward to this. I am so looking forward to this as well. I've been following you on LinkedIn. Love what you do. Love how you're serving others. And and so this is going to be a fun conversation. I'm just curious. Get, t- talk to us. How did you get to where you're at right now as the CEO at Catalyst Consulting, my friend? Yeah, well, I guess how far back do you want to go? Um, I, uh, it's, can- it's all you. As you can probably tell, uh, I'm not not from America. Uh, yeah, it doesn't from... sound like you're from North Carolina or anything. So uh, we no. have a little bit different accent here. Yeah, absolutely. So yeah, <laughs> originally from originally from England, uh, came over to America when I was 18 to play college soccer. I was recruited over to play uh, soccer at the collegiate level. Uh, went through you know all four years of college, and then at the end of my Senior year, I started a SaaS company uh, called Recruit Shoot, which was a online recruiting platform, basically to help international players come over to the US. Uh, kind of the same system that I'd gone through, uh, but act as a marketplace for international players who wanted to come over and play in the US at that collegiate level. What I found is that I mean, America was just a great opportunity for me to continue to play at a very high level. Ultimately continue that dream of playing you know potentially going professional at some point and then you know when it didn't happen i had a degree to be able to fall back on so i I started that platform uh to really work with us-based universities uh international uh, players international recruiting clubs you know we worked with some professional clubs you know throughout england as well uh, and started this platform to be able to basically facilitate that and what we found was actually there was a greater need even in the us for players that looking to go and play, you know, maybe in different states. And we found that we had a really large uh, domestic market on there. Continue to grow that company, uh, grow that company, sorry, for uh, two to three years. Uh, and then was eventually acquired by a venture studio uh, software development agency where I then uh, ended up becoming a partner in their agency, uh, became chief revenue officer, scaled that company from a couple hundred thousand dollars uh, a year to on track to do three or four million last year, uh, at which point I was working with a lot of SaaS companies, uh, a lot of individual uh, businesses on their marketing uh, through consulting, and then ultimately then decided to leave and start Catalyst full time about a year ago. Okay. So going back to the college days, so where did you go to school? I went to school in Wisconsin. Okay. Which is where I still live. Still live today. I live just uh, just south of Milwaukee at the moment uh, with my wife. Okay. Very good. So I'm curious. You, you, it sounds like so. You started at SaaS company. You you had that acquisition. Now you're doing the the CEO at Catalyst. Have, have you always had that entrepreneurial blood in you? I have. Yeah, I've I've always been an entrepreneur since I was probably uh, 13 years old. So when I was I was 13, 14 years old when I was in school in England, uh, I would sell sweets to other kids in school. Um, <laughs> I found that I was, I was making more money doing that than a lot of them were at their, you know, jobs, busting tables and everything else. Um, so I would sell sweets in school, uh, started and flipped uh, different items that I could on eBay and things like that when I was younger. Uh, really started getting into that and, and being an entrepreneur. And then in college, uh, I actually started, uh, again, flipping items, uh, being able to buy and sell anything that I could. And then I, I wasn't really sure where it was going to lead me. And then I somehow kind of stumbled into that technology sector. Uh, with marketing and then from there really became passionate about digital advertising which is how I scaled uh, the the previous company and then how I ultimately ended up working with all these clients now right right I mean that's great so I mean it sounds like you but at the end of the day you just have a passion for serving and trying to find it you know fill a need and 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 what the different types of markets that you're working in yeah, absolutely. Yeah, it, it, it's it's and it's all been uh, kind of through I don't know, through luck or uh, just seeing opportunities. I just kind of stumbled into different things, um, and they all seem to have worked out so far. So I just continue to kind of stumble on, you know, through uh, through the different the careers and opportunities that I'll find with that. And again, now that's led me to to Catalyst. About a year ago, I, I found a Catalyst and started working with uh, SaaS companies, with B two B companies predominantly, at working to implement demand generation campaigns. It was something that I'd been running really without understanding the approach that I was doing. I started, you know, researching more about my approach for marketing and found that, you know, there's a lot of terminology around this that I just wasn't familiar with. Started researching really, right, how is this, you know, opportunity and marketing technique growing, you know, in the past five years, found that it was a really hot topic right now and then started to push further and uh, basically increase my understanding of that topic as well. 
Mm-hmm. And speaking of that topic in, in particular, a lot of people, when they think about marketing, they, something, something comes to mind, you know, so maybe debunk, what's a myth out there that you just wanted just to debunk here about marketing and what, and what you do? Yeah, I think the the biggest myth or I think misconception with marketing is that uh, you will you know spend a dollar and make two dollars in the first month. It's it's always a long term play. You know you can't look at marketing as short term. Right. You're not going to have a return on ad spend in the first thirty days. If you sell T-shirts and you have e-commerce, sure there are ways to do it. But for anyone that's doing B two B, you're not going to have a return on ad spend in that first thirty days. So just look at it as a long term approach. Um, there is this constant, I think, misunderstanding of you need this marketing funnel, you have to have, you know, these landing pages, you know, everything has to go from there and then retarget and everything has to be tracked and attributed. The fact is a lot of marketing right now, there is broken attribution. Um, a lot of the the content that, you know, you could serve up on a landing page or an ebook, you can also serve up in a video and it can just be consumed, you know, organically on the, the platform that you want to serve that add on as well. So just understanding the best mm-hmm. ways to have a, be more effective with your budget uh, is something that I'm helping a lot of clients understand stand mm-hmm. i'm with you and, and speaking of budgets you know we're going into a recession it's it's, it's difficult times inflation's through the roof you know so companies may be pulling back right now on marketing what what you're in front of them right now what are you going to say to make them change their mind yeah i mean the, the it's it's a very popular question right now and kind of popular knee-jerk reaction to entering a recession is to cut marketing budget. The fact is when you cut marketing budget, mm-hmm. you don't hurt yourself today, you hurt yourself in 12 months time. So understanding that as a CEO or a CMO, um, to be able to have that understanding is going to allow you to, you know, basically project this out and understand, right, this isn't going to affect me in the next six months. So if that's what we're trying to do, it's not going to accomplish what you want. It is going to be a longer term play. Uh, Whereas with anything, when, you know, you have people who are making knee jerk reactions, there's also a lot of opportunity. And that's something that I'm pitching a lot of clients right now is let's double down on certain channels because they are less expensive to be able to run ads on certain channels right now, such as LinkedIn. Uh, So if we can really capitalize on this, that's a huge opportunity for us to be able to benefit in 12 months time rather than be defensive. Mm -hmm. Right. Love it, man. So curious, we we try to take these heroes conversations, particularly someone like you, you've done so much with marketing, you've, 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 you got so much to share. And and by the way, guys, go out there, check out the show notes because we'll have ways you can connect with Chris directly and follow all the wonderful things he's doing. Give some advice to that young listener who may be trying to figure out, okay, I want to start pursuing more marketing type of avenues in my career. What what are you going to tell them? Where would you point people? Yeah, I think for any marketer, the best advice I can give you is to to go out and market. And as obvious as that sounds, go out and do something. Go out and test it. Go and spend your own Mm. money on a platform to see if you can understand it. You know, for me, when we started testing with TikTok ads, I ran TikTok ads for Catalyst before I ran TikTok ads for any other client because I had to understand that platform. I had to make sure that I had that fundamental understanding before I could ever feel comfortable recommending that a client should use that. And once I started to see the results for myself and I understand how the platform works and how the conversions, how to set up the campaigns, now I feel more comfortable having clients basically managing their budget on there. So as someone that's an early stage marketer, best advice I can give you is to go out and test it, go and understand how these platforms work and just research and understand and listen to podcasts and find, you know, mentors in the space that can talk about the approaches that they do and start to understand why they're thinking about marketing the way that they are. Because anyone that graduates with a degree in marketing or anyone that's looking to get into marketing, they don't really know yet what to do. And that's something where I think the system as a whole, and not to get kind of too broad with this, the system as a whole, marketing is always evolving. So the moment you graduate with your marketing degree, you're already outdated because it's already changed. It's constantly moving. I can guarantee, you know, anyone that was doing a a marketing degree, I know when I was, you know, 10 years ago, there was no mention of TikTok ads on there. You know, that wasn't a thing. And therefore, when you're looking at ways to constantly increase your understanding, you have to go out and be proactive. You have to go and and do your own research, find individuals that will talk on certain topics that can be your mentor. Um, You know, I have mentors that I look up to as marketers. um, And I know I have individuals that look up to me as a mentor with marketing and find somebody that is one step ahead of you, not five steps ahead of you. Find someone that you can relate to and that you aspire to be in that position in 12 to 18 months time, not someone that is, you know, already doing a hundred million dollars a year marketing agency, because you're not going to accomplish that in, you know, 12 months time. Mm Mm-hmm. I'm so glad you went to to mentorship because I think that's just something we miss in, in general. 
I'm curious for you personally, any stories on, on, on maybe something you've learned from your mentors and, or how does that work? Is that a, is that a one-on-one -on -one relationship or are these mentors, you know, just influencers that you follow and you just do what they say or just, how does that work for you? Yeah. I think the biggest misconception with finding a mentor is that they have to sit on a call with you once a week and, you know, you explain mm -hmm. the problem to the, to them and then they're going to somehow give you the perfect answer. What I found is that I know I have, mentors in, in marketing that I follow their content. I will message them on LinkedIn. We'll have short conversations. Um, we don't sit on Zoom calls. They're not, you know, uh, brand uh, ambassadors for my company. You know, it, it's not, we have no professional relationship with that, but I very much value their opinion on marketing, on business, the approach that they take. And for me, being able to consume their content allows me to, you know, further my understanding because I want to get Catalyst to that next level, to that next point where we're doing, you know, seven figures a, a year with that multiple seven figures a year you know that for me is really a, a goal of mine so i'm looking at people who are already doing that if they have a book i'm reading that book if they have a podcast i'm listening mm -hmm. to that podcast that is a different type of mentorship that a lot of uh, people and for me when i was younger I didn't really understand because I wanted to, I, you know, I wanted a mentor. I wanted to find someone that I could sit down with and they could, you know, tell me that. And quite often the best mentors, they don't have the time to sit down with you on a regular basis. So people you are getting to sit down with you, they may be not the, the same level that a lot of these individuals are. And therefore, you know, understand that when you're asking your college professor to be a mentor for you, or you're asking, you know, local business owners, which is great. You can get a value up to a certain point, but it's understanding that it doesn't have to be a one-to-one -one relationship. It can be you just consuming their content, especially if they produce content at a regular on a regular basis. You know, I've asked that question for two and a half years now, and I finally got somebody who thinks the way that I do about this. <laughs> so this is pretty cool for me personally, because this is great, man. I think, you know, the game's changed. You're right. You know, if I look at the beginning of my career, yeah, the mentor was a little bit more one-on-one, -on -one, you know, sitting across the table, maybe a phone call, you know, again, that was, that was 20 years ago. Now my mentors now, some of them, I don't even directly have a relationship, but I'm learning, I'm growing from those guys every week. Right. And, and, and depending on the type of content they put out, you know, the materials they put. And I just think that is such a piece that, that's, that we, we, we don't put enough value in and, and can overlook, but man, if you get it right and you follow the right people, it can have such a huge impact. No, absolutely. But it also puts the onus on you to find those people. And that's, that's right. Where, you got to do the work. Exactly. You have to do the work. You're not just, you know, sitting down one to one. So it, it's, it's, it's more time intensive on your side. It's more effort that you have to put in, but you're going to get much stronger results and you will further your education and really accelerate that understanding. If you can identify, you know, those individuals. So that, that's something, and it, it's different for everybody. You know, not everybody wants the same right. mentors. Not everybody takes the same value out of it. Someone that I find value from, you know, you may not find value from people may find value right. from me. Some people may not find value from me. So again, understanding that is critical, uh, but putting in that work and that research is going to allow you to, you know, really be able to accelerate that. And you will find over time that your mentors and who you're consuming content from will shift. And that's the yeah, it changes. It evolves and you move past certain people. Because again, if you're always looking at someone that's one step ahead of you to want to learn from, as you get to that next step, then you're looking at somebody another step ahead. Mm -hmm. And that I think is the critical part is constantly understanding how that evolves and finding that next person to understand and learn from. Well, you just dunked all over that question. I, I don't know if I could ever ask anybody <laughs> answer that any better than that, man. So that was great. That was great. Awesome. Loved it. So I'm curious from you though, when, at Catalyst, your CEO, let's say you just had the best day, you crushed it, you're, you're, you come home and, and you're, you're feeling good about what you did that day. You made a big impact. You're feeling fulfilled. You're feeling joy. What did you do that day? What, what would you do that made you feel that way? Within, within Catalyst? Yeah, within your within your as your as your role as a CEO of Catalyst. Yeah, I mean, one of the first and foremost, and you know, one of the 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 main goals with any marketing agency is to get results. So when we have clients that we're getting results for, and I'm having I had a meeting with a client yesterday, and we lowered the uh, one of the, the customer acquisition costs by about fifty percent. So. I'm having that meeting with them and I'm being able to show them those results. And we, you know, we'd, we'd run a series of tests over the last six months with them. We tested a lot of things with that. And we finally basically 
it's clicked. What we've been running, we've been testing a lot of things and, and marketing is a lot of testing, a lot of tweaking, but we've now, it's clicked. It's it's now, it's running on all cylinders. We're now making not these incremental improvements. It's now coming on leaps and bounds, which is really what at the point I'm getting to. And when I'm having that conversation with the clients and you can see, again, it's their business, it's their baby. And a lot of the, you know, the individuals that I work directly with are CEOs because they are smaller companies. Um, and you can see how, they are now understanding and, and further investing and now they want to increase the budget and now they want to be able to move to that and they get excited about it. That for me is a great feeling, you know, within, uh, within client relationships is being able to deliver on those results. But another great component is, you know, when I, I'm able to, you know, have individuals reach out to me and be able to, you know, provide insights on podcasts like this. Like the reason that I come on podcasts is because I love sharing my understanding of that because keeping it to yourself is not really of any value. And I have a lot of people that, you know, ask me, well, if you share everything that you do on podcasts and I'm very open on podcasts, I'm happy to answer any question on there. But if you share how you do that, how do you stop people just, you know, creating another catalyst and being able to go and start their own marketing agency? And I have no problem. I actually help. I, I consult with a couple of marketers right now who are starting their own agency, who have been made redundant or who have left, you know, their companies. And now they want to start their own marketing agency and, you know, being able to work with them as well for me personally is very fulfilling. It doesn't necessarily benefit Catalyst, but for me personally, that's something that I take a huge amount of pleasure out of is helping other people understand and get to where I'm at right now. It's the same way that I'm looking at other people, you know, again, one step ahead. Man, I love it. I, I, such a great heart for helping. And that's going to take you so far, as you know, of just that, that serving others and, and helping, helping those, those couple steps behind you get up, man, great, great stuff. I love it. So we're going to shift now, Chris, we're going to, we're going to stop talking about the professional and we're going to start talking about you outside of work. So man, give us some hobbies. What, what do you enjoy doing for fun? Yeah, I'm a huge, still a huge soccer player. Um, okay. So I, yeah, I spent a lot of time uh, playing soccer. I play on uh, local leagues in the Milwaukee area. Uh, I play on a majors team here um, that travels throughout Wisconsin. Uh, so that's something that a lot of clients don't really know that I do that as well. So in the evenings when they're calling me and I'm not answering, it's usually because I'm on a soccer field. Um, so I'm still doing that to, you know, quite a high level and continuing to, you know, play that game. Um, huge fan of you know just being fit being able to work out um you know i have a great basement gym here uh, at the house that i've created in the last couple of years um so for me you know that's where I, I get a lot of pleasure and then you know spending time with my wife my dog you know we go on on, on walks we travel a lot you know those are really uh things that we we care to do as you know as a family as well and that's where you know i get a, a ton of value out of that and one of the things we're actually looking at right now is converting an old rv and traveling around for six months of the year and being able to work remote and kind of take our lifestyle you know on the road that's something that we're you know currently we've been looking into it for a while um and that's something that i think would be a really interesting uh opportunity to to make the most of and now with you know internet being everywhere and the ability to travel and i work remote anyway you know that's something that i think is a, a really cool opportunity that more and more people are interested in maybe don't have that again insight into so that's something that if, if we end up doing that i'll definitely be documenting a lot of that process as well uh, to kind of show people how you know you can work remote and you can travel around absolutely now if you do that you got to figure out a way to get that cool background background you have going on in your studio i know in your, in your rv you know what i'm saying you got to make some type of wall or something there yeah that's something i've not figured out yeah i was i was actually thinking that as I, I maybe i could take a picture of it and then green screen it on i'm not i'm not sure the way to do that <laughs> well it's, it's, it's definitely awesome well man best of luck to you so you mentioned you, you're married where, where's um, we love talking about family too so give us a little bit more insight is the rest of the family still back in england or you know where, what's going on yeah so all of my family is still in england uh, my sister is actually uh, over with us at the moment uh, my mom and stepdad were over here for the last uh, 10 days so they've been traveling and, and come over um but all of my all of my immediate family is still in england um again i, I came over here when i was 18 so they're all still live in the Manchester area and kind of different, you know, within a, a couple okay. of hours of Manchester. We'll be heading back uh, at the end of August as well to, to see family. It's the first time I'll be back in two and a half years, which is, you know, pretty cool to get the opportunity to go back again just with COVID and everything else. Uh, we just haven't been able to get home. So that'll be cool. I'm not seeing some of my family now in two and a half years. Um, but yeah, all of all of my family is still in England, and then my wife my wife is from you know just outside of Milwaukee. Uh, all of her family okay. is is from Milwaukee area, and we live within a you know couple of, a couple of mile radius of a lot of her family as well. So we have a very close knit uh, support and and family side as well, uh, who we spend a, a ton of time with. That is great. Well, thank you so much for sharing that, Chris. That is, sounds like you have a wonderful family, and wish the best for you know blessings for you guys in the future for sure. Yep, appreciate that.
Now, curious guy like you, you're, you're out there, you're crushing it. I'm, I'm very interested here. Podcasts, YouTube channels. What do you consume for, for, for you know, professionally as well as just for pleasure? What, 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 what's on your uh, feed there? Yeah, I, I do a ton of uh, Audible books. So for me, that's where I. I do a ton of audible books because uh, I do it when I walk the dog. I've, I've realized over the last couple of years, um, I just don't really like reading. Um, it's something that I just, I, I keep trying to get, I've read different books and I try to get into it and I try to find down time to sit down, you know, in my office and read and it just never happens. Uh, so what I found is audible books for me is a, great way to i can get through a book in a week you know two weeks you know i really can accelerate through them because of the fact that I'll, I'll listen to them when i walk the dog i'll listen to them when i jump on the bike um if i'm in the garage if i'm in the gym you know for me it's a way to constantly be consuming whilst i'm doing other things or cooking or whatever that is um so i don't have to necessarily just set time aside to sit down and read a book um that's been a great you know great realization that i made and and that has allowed me to really increase now where i can you know read a book a month which has been great um and then in terms of uh, you know podcast you know there's a company called refine labs that has a state of demand podcast which is a great podcast that explains in a lot of detail um you know demand generation a lot of their their individuals have their own podcast as well you know different content that they're consuming i have a lot of peers on linkedin that have podcasts that i'm consuming theirs as well uh and those are for me you know i don't always necessarily sit down and listen to the entire episode but the snippets on linkedin is where i'll, I'll get a lot of that content from sure and then if i want more information then i can go and kind of watch the full episode now on your books are you listening at one time two times one and a half where, where, where are you at there listen from a speed standpoint Oh, I'm at one times. I can't, I can't understand anything faster than uh, one times. You know, I'm, <laughs> I'm taking my time. I'm walking the dog. I'm yeah, I'm chilling out. I'm not trying to, uh, trying to rush through them. Okay. Very good. Very good. Well, thank you for sharing that. Now, now we play on the, the eco asks why a lightning round, Chris, where I'm just going to fire a bunch of random stuff at you. It's quick fire. You just fire right back with what comes to mind and we'll uh, have some fun with that. Sounds good. All right, buddy. Well, I'm curious for you. Favorite food, uh, favorite food, uh, Chinese. Chinese food. Okay. How about a uh, favorite adult beverage? Uh, I would say, I would say beer, IPA beer. Okay. Any, any particular brand? Um, I like uh, Lagunitas IPA. Okay. Okay. What's on your nightstand right now? Uh, my phone charger and a lamp. <laughs> okay. You're I'm a simple, to, <laughs> I was trying to think, I, like, I, don't, I don't actually think there's anything. There's maybe a receipt on there and uh, my phone charger <laughs> and a lamp right now. Okay. Okay. Now what's the, what's the favorite app that you have on your phone? LinkedIn. LinkedIn. Okay. Sports team, all time favorite sport team. Uh, Manchester United. I knew you were going there. I knew you were going there. <laughs> How about uh all time favorite movie? Uh, I actually really like dodgeball. It's a really stupid movie, um, really? but it, it, it's, it is hilarious to me. I, I do like dodgeball. Well, Chris, you know, if you can dodge a wrench, you can dodge a ball yeah. brother. So that's the way it goes, you know? So how about, uh, give me a, is there a guilty pleasure you have? I'm curious here. Um, guilty pleasure. I don't know, really. I, I don't know about a guilty pleasure. Um, uh, okay. No sweets in the middle of the night or anything like that. Okay. No, not, not particularly. No, I, I was thinking food wise then I was like, there's not, yeah, not, not particularly food wise. Um, guilty pleasure um no i can't i can't think of anything really i, I tend to I, okay. I, i'm kind of I, i'm a bit straight laced with it i can't think of anything that would be a guilty pleasure what's your uh what type of music you listen to i listen to all to be honest i, I to be honest that's one of my least favorite questions is when people are like oh like what music are you into because i listen to okay it depends what mode i'm in if i'm in workout mode i listen to you know different music if i'm you know out walking the dog if i'm on a boat we're listening to country music like it, it's all it, it's kind of i'm very easy going with it i don't really as bad as it sounds i'm not into music enough to really have an opinion on it it's always kind of background noise for me um so yeah. it doesn't really matter i'll kind of listen to, to anything i'd say most commonly i'll listen more now to country music now living in wisconsin which people always find funny because i'm english um but i do love sitting on a boat with a beer listening to country music it's it's a lifestyle that i have completely adopted Okay, you feel right in that lifestyle. Oh, I, yeah. I feel you. I feel you. All right. Where where is uh one place that you you hope you and your wife get to go one day that you haven't been to yet? Um, I would love to go out west to Colorado. Okay. Nice. Yeah, we've not we've not done that yet. That's some that's something that's on the agenda uh for you know, if we do end up doing the RV, we'd like to go out west and kind of explore more of that area. 
Well, I'm looking forward to that that RV experience. That's going to be fun to follow follow you and see how that goes. So last question, Chris, on the lightning round. Dogs or cats? Oh, dogs. Oh, okay. There was only one right answer, and you got it right, my friend. All right, buddy. This has been a great love love to get to know you. We we call it Eco Ask Why. We always wrap up with the why, Chris. So, you know, if somebody wants to know what your personal why is, you know, where are you going to tell them? Why for starting Catalyst or why for just in general? Just, just for you, you as a person, what, what is your personal why? Yeah, for, for me, it's, uh, it's probably a little bit of having a chip on the shoulder, just always have done. Um, don't know why, just from an early age, I think moving to America at 18, you know, I, I wanted to be more independent. I wanted to, you know, stand on my own two feet. Um, I've, I've never had a job. I've always, you know, been part of starting my own companies, uh, you know, been founders in companies, been partners in companies. So for me, it's a lot of a uh, chip on the shoulder to be able to continue to have that independence of being a business owner um, and being able to, you know, really grow and provide for my family as well. You know, the why has definitely shifted more to family based now than it was you know, five, 10 years ago when it was, you know, hey, start a company. It was something that I wanted to help because of the mission of the company. A lot of it now is, you know, it's being able to provide for my family and have a certain life that, you know, we aspire to have as well uh, and be able to, you know, have that freedom and flexibility to travel and, and be, uh, you know, be creative when we're young, you know, not to, to have to wait until, you know, you're, you know, 60 years old to retire, to go and travel and things like that. You know, I'm very much trying to build a specific lifestyle for us so that we can make the most of it uh, for my wife and I and, and my, my dog when, you know, when we're here right now. I love it. Well, this has been so much fun getting to know you, Chris. So where do you want people to go to connect with you to learn more about, you know, you directly catalyst and all the amazing things you guys got going on? Yeah, best place to find me is going to be LinkedIn uh, or TikTok. So, I mean, I'm sure you can put links on there. And then the website yep. is catalystconsulting.services. All right. And we'll make sure we sync all that up in the show notes for you listeners. So, Chris, thank you so much for coming on Eco Ask Why. It's been an absolute pleasure to, to dig into this with you. I had a lot of fun on this hero episode. Yep, me as well. Thank you for having me. All right. Now, that was a fun conversation with Chris. I'll tell you what, that he just fun energy, uh, lots of insight. But his answer on mentorship, go back and listen to it. If you didn't capture everything that he, that he went through there, that's a big opportunity there. You know, there's the opportunity to grow and learn from others, particularly the world that we live in now. It's so connected. Find someone one step, two steps ahead of you and, how, and, and then learn from them. And then when you get there, keep searching. You know, the mentors, they grow, they evolve. Obviously, we're going to have mentors at our workplace. We get that. We're talking about there's so many more opportunities to grow. And Chris's definition of mentorship and how he looks at that and also how he mentors others, huge, huge. So, again, go back, check that out. He's doing wonderful things. Highly encourage you guys to go check out Catalyst Consulting. If you're a manufacturer out there and you need some support with your with your marketing efforts, Chris and his, his group, they're doing some great work. So if you're liking Eco Ask Why, give us a rating, write a review. That makes a big difference. We're still collecting war stories as well, so check out the show notes. There's a link you can send us a direct message for those war stories. You know, the good, the bad, the ugly, the stuff you tell around the water cooler, the stuff you'll remember the rest of your life. We want to hear those stories so that we can share with others. So we hope you enjoyed this. If you did, again, share it out with others. And we hope you have a great week. And remember, keep asking why.